right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove another very useful identity about determinants, namely that the determinant of A transpose equals to the determinant of A. And then at the end, I will also solve a little mystery of linear algebra. So just stick around. All right, so we want to show this. How do we do this? First of all, just actually like the proof that the determinant of AB is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Let's get rid of the case where A is not invertible. So note, so if one case one, A is not invertible. Well, then on the one hand, we know that the determinant of A is zero. Okay, we can in independently show this. But also, if A is not invertible, then the rank of A is not optimal. So it's strictly less than n, where A is n by n. But then, what is the rank of A transpose? Well, I not by definition, but it is true that it's the same as the rank of A. And if you want, it's the same as the number of pivots of A. So it turns out the number of pivots in A is the same as the number of pivots in A transpose. And that's if you want, because a pivot row of A is a pivot column of A transpose. So the pivots don't really get changed. Um, so the rank of A transpose is the rank of A. And in particular, because the rank of A is less than N, it follows that the rank of A transpose is less than N. And in particular, um, this implies that A transpose is not invertible. And in particular, we get that the determinant of A transpose, it's also zero, which is equal to the determinant of A. So in the case where A is not invertible, we know that this identity holds and therefore, from now on, assume that A is invertible. So assume A is invertible. And just like before, for the second case, let's do the simplest case possible. So let's assume A is an elementary matrix. Uh, so assume A is elementary. I want to show you that in each case, we do have the term of A equals the term of A transpose. So first of all, assume A is of type 1, which just means A interchanges two rows. So interchanges. And so rows I and J. What it looks like, it looks like the identity matrix, but rows i and j are interchanged. So let me just give you an example. If you have a four by four matrix and you interchange rows one and four, then it looks like this, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, zero. And what do you notice about this matrix? Well, precisely A transpose equals A. In fact, this is always true. The row interchange matrix is always symmetric. And that's because what does this matrix look like? The, it's the identity except the ijth entry and the jith entry are one. And in particular, if you take the transpose, it just means the jth entry and the ijth entry will also be one, which is exactly the same matrix. So in this case, because A transpose equals A, it follows that trivially, the determinant of A transpose equals to the determinant of A. So in this case, we do have this is true. And by the way, that determinant is one in that case. Now, type two, suppose A multiplies a row by let's say k, then what does A look like? Well, it looks like the identity, except 
rho k has this value k, so the k comma k entry is k, and in that case we also have that a transpose equals a. So it's also true that the determinant of a transpose equals the determinant of a, which in this case is k. Okay? Now, the trickiest one is type 3. So a, if you want, at k times uh, rho i to rho j. So again, let me give you an example. If you have, let's say, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and you add 3 times, I guess k times rho 1 to rho 3, it looks like the identity, except you add, you know, k on the um, 3 comma first entry. But then what does a transpose look like? It still looks like the identity. But, except that k is in the wrong position. But that is not a problem, because... First of all, I have done this in another video, that if you uh, add k times one row to the other one, the determinant is one. So the determinant of a is one. Whenever, again, you add k times one row to the other. But look! This matrix is of the same form because in this example, you add three times the first row to the third row. In this example, you add three times the third row to the first row. So A transpose is an elementary matrix of the same type. And remember what I said, whenever you add a multiple of one row to the other one, the determinant is still one. So in this case, the determinant of A transpose is also 1. And therefore, it is the same. Determinant of A transpose is the determinant of A. Wonderful. So for all the three types, we have verified that the determinant of A transpose is the determinant of A. And now we can move on to the general case. And again, here is where we need the fact that A is invertible. So since A is invertible, we know that A is a product of elementary matrices. So Em, Em minus 1, dot, 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 E2, E1. And let's calculate A transpose. That is Em Em minus 1, dot, 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 E2, E1 transpose. Now, what does a transpose do? Just like inverses, it flips everything. E1 transpose, E2 transpose, up to Em transpose. Which is good, because this looks kind of like the wrong order, and now we put it in the right order. And then, what is that? the determinant of A transpose? That's the determinant of E1 transpose, E2 transpose, and EM transpose. Yeah, it's almost like ET wants to go home, except with those EIs. And here's the thing. Now we've already shown that determinant is multiplicative. So this is really determinant of E1 transpose, determinant of E2 transpose up to the determinant of EM transpose. All right, but the whole point is all those EIs are elementary. So by case two, we have shown that we can just remove the transpose. So this is the determinant of E1 times the determinant of E2 times the determinant of EM. And the cool thing is, even though matrices don't always commute, AB is not BA, those are all numbers. So as numbers, we can just commute them 
So this will then become determinant of EM, determinant of EM minus 1, da, 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 determinant of E1, and then again, because it's multiplicative, that is the determinant of EM, da, 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 up to the determinant of E1, but that's precisely the determinant of A. So, what have we shown? We've shown that indeed the determinant of A transpose equals blah 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 equals to the determinant of A. So, this is the general case. So, from now on, feel free just to use this identity whenever. And lastly, as promised, I want to solve one of the big mysteries of linear algebra. Because, how did we define the determinant? We define it as cofactor expansion along the first row. And then, with a lot of work, we've shown that you can actually cofactor expand it along any row. But it's not obvious yet that you can expand it along any column. But this is precisely what we're going to show now. So, um, so fact can uh, evaluate the determinant. Terminal of A uh, using any column. So not just any row, but any column. And why is this true? Well, um, expansion uh, um, using column J of A. Here's the thing. So suppose you have the J column and you expand, just you expand it. You don't know if it's a determinant or not, but suppose you do a cofactor expansion along column J, but look, the Jth column of A is the Jth row of A transpose. So what it is, it's an expansion using row J. of A transpose. But remember, whenever you expand along a row, it gives you the determinant. So this expansion calculates, indeed, the determinant of A transpose. But we've just shown that the determinant of A transpose is the determinant of A. So working backwards, what have, what have we found? We found that the determinant of A is indeed the expansion using any column of A. So from now, feel free just to expand the main determinant using whichever row or whichever column you want. And you can like sleep in peace now. Um, all right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.